Hello. Good afternoon. How are you today? I hope you're fine. And I trust you're doing well. Yes, today is Trisha's voice. Welcome. 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 I trust your day is going on well. I told you before, you don't need to worry. Everything will be fine with time. Whatever you're going through, don't worry. Yeah. It's a face. It will just go off with time. So stay strong, okay? Today is Trisha's voice. And with you right now is Ambassador Mrs. Patricia Godwin Solomon. And I'm here to talk about child marriage. Child marriage, yes. Child marriage. Child marriage is a serious issue in the society today. I'm sure you're aware. I'm very, very sure that you are aware. If it doesn't happen to you, maybe your neighbor, your siblings, your brothers, your sisters, cousins, and all that. So taking your mind back, looking at all the child marriage you know, or children getting married at random, or either by force or however it is, when you look at that marriage or those marriages, what comes to your mind? What plays back in your mind? So today is a serious issue and we need to talk about it, okay? Yes. Child. I didn't want to say young people. I did not use youth. I used the word child so that you really understand my point. Now, who is a child? Who is a child? A child is a human being between the stage of birth and puberty. Between the stage of birth and puberty. That's as a fetus in the womb is already a child to puberty stage so any child or any person who falls into this category is then a child a child is a young person who is typically older than a baby but younger than a teenager or yeah or a teen you understand do you understand the point a young person who is typically older than a baby you understand so when we want to talk about child or child childhood, it starts from the womb, the fetus in the womb, because that's where it starts to puberty stage. Now, somebody will say, why would you say that? You know, we have three major stages of, or developmental stages of childhood. Yes, we have three major developmental stages of childhood. The first, um, the first one is the, the, the early childhood. We have the early childhood. We have the middle childhood. And then we have adolescence. All these three are categorized under a child or under childhood. Do you understand? We have the early stage of childhood. We have the middle stage of childhood. And we have the adolescent stage of childhood. Remember, we are not using the word adult. We are using child. Now, the earliest childhood is from, from birth to five. From birth to five. That's the early childhood. Or some people will say, some people would also break it down to include toddler. And they will say toddler is from, um, from, from birth to three. From birth to three, they call them toddler. Uh, but if you want to really go directly to the stages, the three stages, the first stage is early, early childhood, and that starts from birth to five. And then the middle start, uh, childhood starts from six to 12. We've had some persons, you know, have other contradictions, and you hear somebody say, no, it's nine. Some people will say, no, you know, but then I just want you to understand where I'm coming 
or where I'm going to, or what I'm about to say. So the middle childhood starts from 6, 6 to 12. And then the adolescent stage starts from 7 to 18. If I'm, I'm sorry, 13 to 18, if I'm not mistaken. Early childhood is from birth to 5. Middle childhood is from 6 to 12. Adolescent is from 13 to 18. Yes. That's the standard here in Nigeria. Other countries may have their own contradictions or how they believe. Everything depends on how. You know, in Nigeria, when if you're, on, if you're, if you're a 17-year-old person or 16, you're classified as a child. There are some certain things you cannot be, you know, held responsible if you're not up to 18 years because they'll tag you a minor you see you are a minor not even a tag you are a minor in some countries at the age of 16 you're already an adult they'll start seeing you like a young person that you can stay on your own you can do things you know but here in nigeria it's 18. It means you have you are eligible to to vote and be voted for uh -huh. Franchise. So, what is marriage? I quickly go into marriage. So many people don't know the definition of marriage. They just feel you can just do anyhow. No, it's not like that. Marriage is a legally or formally recognized union of two people as partners in a personal relationship. Two people as partners. Two people as partners. Remember, there's a word legal. There's a word formal. Two people as partners. Now, you cannot, you can, one person cannot just go into marriage. It has to be two. It takes two to be in marriage. You understand? We have other marriages, you see, man to man, you see, woman to woman. But the one I'm talking about today is a man and a woman. Because that is what I stand for. Yes. I stand for a man and a woman marriage. So, The word formal, formal, what does it mean? Organize, well organized, well arranged, well prepared, in a good way, in a good and acceptable way, in a way that it is not seen like something that is illegal. You get, I'm just trying to make you understand. That is the real definition of marriage. Meaning that it is concept kind of um, consensual. You have to seek consent. They have to be a awareness. That's why it is formal. They have to be awareness. There are other things to back it up. There are documents to back it up. People should witness it. So when we say formal, it doesn't really mean that it must be in court you sign and all that. Just for one, this other family. To sit and these other family to and as uh, are seated like the man's family is here and the woman's family is here is already a formal arrangement. Yes, it was already it's, it's already a formal arrangement. So it's not like until you sign papers and sign and all that. I don't know if you get my point. I'm coming. Okay, now another definition of marriage. Marriage, it is regulated by laws. I have already said that rules you know custom beliefs and attitude that prescribes the rights and duties of the partners now when you hear marriage it's not just the celebration and the drinking and the eating the merriment part each person has obligation each person has duties to perform you know everybody has his or her responsibility you all have yours i have mine and that's it so I'm trying to break down to explain those words so that you understand better. Now on child marriage, which is the reason why I'm here today. You know, some, someone will ask me, why did you choose child marriage? You know, it's a problem people don't know. It's a big problem in our today's society. People don't know. People see it as a blessing. Well, it's good. But when you want to look at it, the side effect is massive. As a guidance counselor, 
in my little experience, I can tell you that child marriage shouldn't be encouraged. So today I decided to take out time to talk to parents. Sorry, I forgot to even inform you on time to let your young people, you know, watch me. I really want them to watch me live. Adolescents, you heard, you heard the, the stages. From middle to adolescent should be in this program to listen to what I have to say about child marriage. So that they will learn one or two things. Now, child marriage refers to any formal marriage or informal union between a child under the age of 18. An adult or another child. It's a formal arrangement, partnership hmm? between a child and an adult or a child with another child. Now, you notice that some adults marry, marry a child. Some adults marry children. Let me put it that way. A man of 50 years, a man of 40 years, a man of 30 years is getting married to a, a girl of 15. That's a child marrying an adult. Now, child to child marriage is a child marrying a child. Now, the, the groom, let me put it that way. It's groom now. <laughs> the man is, or let me say the boy, because I don't know how to really, really, really place them. It's a boy to me. And I don't know, I cannot, I don't know how I'm going to put it to tell you that he's a man. He's not a man for me, not in the other way, but in this context. He's a boy. A boy of 15 years or 17 years, you know, is getting married to a girl of 14 years. That's child to child marriage. A minor. In other words, a minor marrying a minor. That's what it means. You can say a minor to minor marriage. <laughs> Not a plus. Okay. Child marriage is a marriage or domestic partnership, formal or informal, between a child and an adult. Or between a child and another child. You know now there is informal in it. Anything that is not formal is informal. Now informal in this context. The formal part I had already told you that. The formal part there is consent. They seek consent of the both parties or the both parents. But in this other one there is a place I said informal. Informal in the sense that they have not done the needful. They have not done the needful. You didn't pay bright, uh, bright price. The parents are not really aware. They don't even know what, you know, it's, it's informal. Because you haven't done it right. You didn't follow the procedure. You didn't follow the direction. You did something very different. So that's child marriage. Now, note, in some region, the legal age for marriage can be as young as 14, with cultural traditions sometimes superseding legal stipulations. What that point is trying to say is that I mentioned it earlier when I was trying to explain the stages of childhood or developmental stages of a child. In Nigeria, before you can be called an adult and you'll be held responsible for all the things you do is when you get to 18. But in other countries, you know, they believe that you have to get to 16. You understand? But now, the religious part of it may not really conform with what the society is saying. Get my point. Some traditional religion will want their children to get married even at the age of 12, 13. And they see nothing wrong with it. But the society is saying, before this child can get married, this child should get to this point. Now, they contradict there's contradiction. And you know when it happens like that, there's a problem. Somehow there's a problem. We are still coming, we'll get to that point. Research has proven that one out of five girls get married in childhood across the globe. Yes, that's what, you know, people had to go into researching. I have done my own research. Yes, I have. Before I will tell you that, Child marriage is a problem. 
I have done my own research and of a truth it is. From the experience I have gathered to talk to children who are into marriage, I can tell you that it's a problem. So now research is telling you that one out of five across the globe is involved in child marriage. That's to tell you that it has eaten deep is, is, is far. You know, I was expecting to say one out of 20. If we say one out of 20, then we are trying. Oh, you say one out of five. That's every five young girls. There must be one that is involved in child marriage. That's what that thing is trying to explain in a way. So now, reasons for child marriage. What are the reasons? Why did you enter child marriage? Why did you start it? How did you get yourself in it? What prompted you to it? What did you see? What were you admiring? Was it your own plan? Were you pushed into it? These are the questions that I should be asking. And you should be answering those questions if you are affected. Causes of child marriage is what I want to talk about. Number one is teenage pregnancy. You know, a teenager is also a child in a way. If you want to take, a, if you want to take a look at the, the, the under the developmental stages of childhood, a teenager is a child. It is later we now try to categorize them and separate them because of the nature and the things that comes in puberty, development of you know, the B R S T. I don't want to pronounce the here, you know. You know, you, the development of pubic hairs and all that, deep voice, uh, uh, masculine nature, and then menstruation and a lot of things. It's not because you have seen those things, so, and you now assume you're an adult. You are a child. I'll tell you why. Now, some people feel that once a child is pregnant, it is automatic or... Is a direct ticket to marriage. That's what some parents feel. Once a child is pregnant, say, Shabby, you're pregnant. You'll go and meet him. Now, at this point, I'm talking to parents. And I'm as well talking to children, young people. I'm sorry I did not put the age in the post I made earlier that today is going to be a class. But once I mention child marriage, parents should know that this topic is going to be for their children and for them also. And they ought to allow their children to be here. So now, child marriage is not something you should joke with. Some parents, when the child is pregnant, they send that child away. Go back and meet your husband. They have assumed that you're married already. You know why? Because you have done the thing that is meant for married people. In their own mentality, oh, that's what they think. You have done what married people are supposed to do or adults are supposed to do. So now you have, you know, you are an adult. So they feel you are now an adult, you should go. And some parents will push the child, the girl child out. And the girl child will not have a choice. Will now go to meet the boy. And they start living together. And they have started marrying. Uh, the real marriage. Teen pregnancy. Teenage pregnancy is one of it. Let me use this opportunity to say what I want to say so that I don't forget later. This is to parents. When your child is pregnant, what I want you to note is that it is not an automatic ticket to marriage. It is not. The child is pregnant. She has made a mistake. And in one way or the other, this is the consequences of, or consequences of what she involved herself in. There should be other ways. Not to send a child. To go and get married to a child. That is going to be a big problem. Now that aside. The next one is poverty. Poverty due to lack age. Parents and guidance seems to encourage children marriage. Or child marriage because of the benefits they get from it. You see one old man, haggard man. Coming to your house. I like that your daughter. And mind you, some children grow more than others. I have a sister that is, if you see her, 
you'll be thinking she's my senior and she's we are maybe she's i'm just like the thought of food or feet that is following her but you will not know that she's just a small girl so what i'm trying to say is that some children grow more than others some grow taller than others some get so developed than others some get so matured than others You know, a child of 11 years or 12 is not looking like an adult of 25. So when they see that, they feel that ah, this one is okay. Some men will even know that this is a minor and they still want to marry. It's everywhere. Am I lying? I'm not. So some parents, due to not having money, lack of food lack of other amenities and all that they will now push the child and say go and marry him so that he'll be supporting the house especially a man is rich and you know there are consequences the next um point still under that is that it could be that the parent of the partner one of the partner is kind of doing well or they are doing well so they tend to push their child into it to benefit or have other benefit like payment of bride price and family name you hear you hear some parents the, the mothers some mothers not only mothers even fathers they do it most men do that i heard that um, the brother is the governor of the state i heard that the cousin is the chief of staff i heard that um their family is very rich. I heard this, I heard that. So you hear them saying, eh, come and marry my daughter. Come and marry my daughter. Because of what they want to get. They want to collect bride price. What is even in the bride price? Drink, alcohol, Google, wrapper, shoe, food. What else? So you, you now push your child into early marriage, forgetting the effect. That aside, and then we have other challenges and other um one of, one other one is a um, cultural tradition. Cultural tradition in some tradition, when a child is born, most especially the female child, parents will go as far as paying a bride price for their son to be married to that girl in the near future. Picking don't bono, you don't, you don't even know how it will be based on relationship because. Maybe my dad is is a friend to the other person, you know, and now they don't bond me. I'm using myself, oh. and then my dad's friend will now come and say, ah, for that girl child, I'm keeping that child for this, my son. And you check the boy they are keeping a wife for, would be just two years or three, sometimes even one, or some to even be a, a crawling baby. You understand? It's still happening, oh. it's not mentions of this, it's still happening. So, you see that happening. And then when the children now grow up, you know they will tell you now, you were betrothed to, you were engaged to, that is the man you're going to live with for the rest of your life. This is the person you will marry when you grow up. And you know that, that time it worked. It actually worked for, for them. But now, eh, 21st century children, they will not accept it. So many. Ah, uh ah. -uh. You have them now. So at the end of the day, you notice know, that the children start growing with the mentality that they are already married. Because before you would do that, you must have dropped some things, some, some drinks, cola nuts, gift items, wrappers, money. And apart from the things they are dropping, time to time, they are always going to show the family love, the parent of the girl, or the par parent of the, will I say bride? It's a bride because they have paid. You know? They will keep on going there. I came to check my son's wife. How are you doing? Sometimes they will carry the child to where the son is. They will start making them to become friends so that they will start getting acquainted to each other for them to get married soon. And some children, when they come, you know children are very sharp. They are already, they are already coming with the mentality that they have paid bride price, so we are married. They won't even wait for the 18 years they have started. Before you say, Jack, pregnancy is here. What age? 13. What, what age? 12. And like I said, that some children develop faster than others while some children will be menstruating at 
10, 14. Some at 9 were already menstruating. Do you understand? 9 years, 10. They're already menstruating. It's everywhere. So, that is a very big risk. And the next thing you see pregnancy, and the next thing you see them, give them one house, they'll leave and start getting married and living together. But in all of this, however you want to see it, there are complications attached. There are effects. And which is one of the things we're still going to talk about in this class. Now, the next one is religious pressure. Religious pressure. Some religions don't accept their members having a child out of wedlock. So they succumb to getting married to each other. Yes. We know this very point too. We know this very point. Our ministers, our pastors, our teachers, our counselors, and all that. Our religious leaders. <laughs> She's pregnant. It's okay. Marry her. You cannot... She cannot be pregnant and then you leave her. You must, the word must is attached. Now, mind you, the person, the man is not seeing the woman as his wife. He is seeing the woman as his friend. Though this has happened, pregnancy has come. You understand? Sometimes it may not just even be pregnancy. They just believe, and hey, if they, there's, the money is there, their parents are both rich, so they can you see the things you're considering, the major things you have not thought about, this ones. So it happens. How old is she? She's 15. How old is the boy? 17. They'll marry. Parents will sponsor the marriage and it will start. By the time the real war will come, the woman will run to this side. The man will run to this side. You see a lot of things happening. Now the next one is social pressure. Some parents are afraid of what the society will say or other parents will say to them. You know, so they do everything to encourage their children to get married. They do everything possible to encourage them. You know, I am the, I am the, you know, I am, I am, I'm, I'm, I am an elder in the church. I am in charge of women. I am a kaiban. No, you have to. No, they have to. No, no, they have to. There's no way. That is, that is it now. Because of your position and what the society will say, you will now force them into getting married. It must be, it must be. You will do everything. You're ready to sponsor it as long as, as long as it doesn't bring shame to you. You know, you accept it. So the next one is fear of the child remaining unmarried into adulthood. Are you hearing that? Fear of the child. Let's say at this point, the child is pregnant. Or let me not use the word pregnant. Some people at the age of 16, 17, you see people start, you see suitors coming, approach, approaching them for marriage. And then they're like, mommy, this one says, said he wants to marry me. This one, they are coming for me. This one, like four or five are already there. You now say, no, 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 now that they have come, let her marry you. Because in the future, I'm not sure she will see husband or you know, that's the fear, fear of the unknown. That maybe after these people are, are, might have come and they are going, and then you feel that she will not, because you've concluded it now, or let me say she, she, she may not or might not have this kind of opportunity again. So you felt it's a good opportunity and you want to grab it when the child is not stable and not mentally mature. So because of that, Parents will tell you, marry. Marry now that her husband, her husband don't come, marry now. Allow her to marry you. I don't know if she will see a man in the future. Who told you she will not see a man in the future? How did she, how did these people approach her now? Did you do billboard to post her pictures everywhere for people to come? So the same way they came now, they will come. Or you tell them this child is a minor, they should give her time. Give her time. She's a minor, she's still growing. She needs to develop, she needs to learn. She needs to go to school. She needs to be educated. She needs to be taught things, the nitty gritty, the main thing in marriage. So you don't just jump into it because there are other responsibilities and duties. 
It's not just about marrying and going. Some people do it, it works. So I'm not condemning that. I'm not saying that it doesn't work for people. But majority of these people will always come back to regrets because of the things that are attached to it. Now, the next one is um, illiteracy. Illiteracy. Parents and guardians who are not exposed to encourage, you know, tends to encourage child marriage. Now, when I said, I use the word illiteracy. It's not just your inability to read and write. Though. I'm sure you know that we still have educated illiterates. People who are educated, but in a way they are not literate. Yes. It's not about reading and writing. Sometimes parents who don't even go to school make sound decisions for their children and even the ones that are exposed. So it's not, a, it's not your inability to read and write. You understand? But your inability to understand the future and health implication of the child you are giving out at this early stage. You get. So the next one is your inability to understand the fact that the child is still underdeveloped. When I'm talking about illiteracy, your inability to know, to understand the fact that this child is still underdeveloped. And mind you, as a child, there are some things in your body that are still trying to find their place. They are not balanced yet. They, they are still growing. The uterus, the womb, everything, the pelvic, it's a process. It should be well-groomed and prepared to carry a child. Do you understand what I'm saying? That is it. When you wear an over, uh, uh, undersized cloth, how do you feel? You can suffocate inside. A clue that is not your size, you're forcing yourself to wear it. That is what is happening. The pelvic of a child, the uterus, the womb, and every other thing inside there, you know, the pelvic is not ready to carry a child because it got, the, the child is still developing. The things in their child's body has not been settled yet. And you have already put something inside there. So while the body is struggling to develop, the child inside is also struggling to develop because the child has to grow to become a human being and come out. The normal way so you notice in that process of that struggle the mother will have complication of which we are going to come we're going to we are going to look into those complications that comes with those things do you understand so now that's for that you know that if anything should interrupt the pregnancy the chances of complication is very high so i'm still talking about illiteracy so it's not that you don't know how to read or you don't know how to write. But it is your inability to make sound decisions for your children, to know what is best and right for them. Now, the next one is perceived inability of women to work. And I tell you, this very point is outdated. It doesn't work that way again. Aren't you seeing what women are doing? Oh, you can goggle. Goggle, check. Top women in the world, check. Successful women in the world, check. People, things have actually changed. It's not the way it was. So that your uh, the mentality of perceiving ability of women to work, they feel that, you know, before now, it was perceived that a woman will only be in the house or be in the kitchen. Your duty is to cook, you know, carry children and then keep the house neat. That's all. That's all. You're not supposed to be a, a, a preacher. You're not supposed to be a doctor. It is a man that is supposed to be. So the woman should stay. And I, I remember vividly when I was doing social studies in secondary, social studies in, second, in secondary school. I did social studies also in my NC. So I, I, I can remember vividly that that time, you know, male education was more, you know, vital and preferred than that of the female. So the woman will be staying in the house and be doing the house chores while the man will, the male child will be sent to school. So, you know, face a career and all that. But now it is not like that. Women are leading. So that mentality of perceived inability of women to work, it doesn't work again. You have not seen. A bank manager is pregnant though. She's going to work with her pregnancy. She still comes back home and do other things. So we now have women who are winning 
We have women who are directors, CEOs, professors, doctors, accountants, everywhere. Owners of empires and fame. So you don't need to be afraid. You understand? You don't need to be afraid. You do not need to be afraid. It's old-fashioned. Women are now given a place in society. So perceiving that inability of a woman to walk is not, is not even a, a, a reason why you should push your girl child into marriage because you already you have already signed, in a way you have already signed in your mind that the only thing this woman can do is to be in the kitchen, which is not true. It's not right. We will always be in the kitchen and we will always be at our offices. Now the next point I want to mention here are the consequences of child marriage. Consequences. When you send your child to get married before time, some parent, nothing happened, or the child is not pregnant. There is no problem. They just feel things they, they male or they, let me say they male because I'm trying not to use the man. When I use the man, to me, it's sounding like he's already a man in this context, you know. So the male child will now come and tell the female, I love you, let's get married. They will now marry. Parents will say, let leave them. They will guide them, will mentor them. You will mentor and mentor and mentor, but you will not live with them forever. You understand? Even under your roof, you'll be seeing some things that you that will always tell you that these are children. Now, the first one is girls who marry as children often lack access to education and future career opportunities. Yes, that's a good one. That's the right thing. It's true. When you're married as a child, remember when I was defining marriage, it comes with rules, it has regulations, it has duties, it has laws, it has responsibilities that you need to keep to. You need to keep to it. Do you understand? You need to keep to it. So it's not just about getting married. Now when you are married, which time will you go to school? Okay, which time, let me say, which time will you be pregnant? Because once you enter, you will be pregnant. After the pregnancy, you will put to bed. Now you will be taking care of yourself and you will be taking care of the baby. And which time will you be going to school to take care of your academic needs? So you see, it slows. Though some people at some point, when they come out of it, they are able to come out of it, they grow. And then they start school again. But not everybody, a good percentage of those people don't go back to school. They don't go back to school. How will they go back to school? In the morning, you have to wake up. You have to bed the children, kids, wear their uniform. They have to go to school. You have to come back and clean the house. You have to take care of your husband. And then you now. How? The chances are always very slim. Now, the next point is adverse health effects resulting from early pregnancy and childbirth. Health. Health is wealth. Yes. Health is wealth. Health is wealth. If you're not healthy, there's possibility that you will not be wealthy. So, so when you, you know, you're having pregnancy complications, that's a threat to your life. Yes, that's a threat to your life. You know why? I had already mentioned it. There are other complications that are coming. If you're not taken good care of in a good specialized hospital and doctors, professionals, you may have serious issues. The next one is for the groom. Groom. Ebendo. <laughs> for the groom. One of the consequences is economic pressure of providing for a household and various constraints in education and career opportunities. Yes, economic pressure. Providing. Remember, you are all children. Both of you are two children. 
child. So when the pressure start coming, that is when you understand who an adult is and who a child is. Hmm? You have become a daddy before time. And you are not living together. So you are not husband and wife. You buy baby milk. You buy diapers. Baby is sick. You buy drugs. You change baby clothes. There's time. There's a time baby. You know, a lot. You are going to start paying house rent. You pay water bill. You pay NEPA bill. You know. You buy food. So now, when the economic pressure start coming, if the groom was in school, will he concentrate? He will not. He will not be able to concentrate. How do you concentrate? There's no food in the house. You're concentrating in your lecture. How? You have to finish what you started. If you're from a family that they don't have a way of helping you, you're on your own. You have to do it. Because the child has to eat. So those are the, the things you will see when you go into early marriage. Childhood marriage was especially childhood. Thank you, Gabriel. Gabriel, thank you for coming. I wave back. Thank you for being a part of my class. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, the next one is um, increased physical violence from intimate partners. Increased physical violence. Now, that violence is a topic on its own. When I want to talk about domestic violence, we'll talk about that. Because they are children, they cannot manage some of the stress and pressure that comes with child marriage. So abuse will set in. Yes. Increased physical violence from intimate partner. They are children who they don't know how to control emotions. They don't know how they don't understand that what what once you're married, these are the things you should face. So they'll always act at some point, the child in them will always play. Have you seen a woman that is pregnant before? Let me use that one first. A pregnant woman. And some days she'll wake up and the, and the baby will say, not even, let me not accuse innocent child because I don't know. The hormones that is, you know, in charge of everything and the pregnancy process will be telling you, eat, eat egg, fried egg, add bread, put mineral on top, add shawarma, put bread, put, you know, you know what it means. It means you have to buy those things. And if you don't buy those things, there's a problem. You know. And sometimes they want to go for antenatal. No money. They want to eat this. No money. They are not okay. They are not comfortable. And the pressure that comes with the pregnancy will also set in. So you see that the woman can make the man go into another realm of anger. You've not seen pregnant women. Some vomit. Before you go to work and come back, they have littered the whole house. And they will not do anything. They will just be there. So if you don't come to the realization that you are a married man and you want to start thinking like a child, it may lead to domestic violence. For example, the, late, the woman will say, I want to buy this for the baby. The woman says, I don't have money. So the problem was they start quarreling. But an adult will understand that of a two, there is no money. That is what that point is just in a way trying to explain. The next one is when a child bets a child, she may not be able to do some certain things. That's another thing. A child bets a child. Like some adult, I will see them leave a child for a child. You're leaving a child for a child. So when a child bets a child, there are some things she will not be able to know or do. Because she's a child. And some parents neglect their children. I'll come to that point. Things like... Taking good care of her children. She doesn't know. A child of 12 years, 13 years, she doesn't know. Is it be the baby is crying? This baby that is crying, is it because the clothes is too tight on the baby? Is it because she's feeling heat? Is it because she's having stomach pains? Is it because this child is, is not eating well? You know, 
How do they take care of? They can carry that child from morning till night, sleep again. They don't even know that betting a child is a necessity, a lot of things. And then the next one may not be able to, to take care of herself. Not only the child. A child who bets a child may not be able to take care of herself. To know that in the morning you have to take your bath. If you just finish, maybe make one water, clean yourself, try this, do that. They will not know. They can wear one clothes from morning till night. There are sometimes you notice that milk, milk, um, I don't want to mention the other one, will be, you know, smelling on their clothes and they'll just be going there. They don't know the kind of bra to wear to kick their breast so that it doesn't fall. A lot of things. Now, that aside, may not be able to handle the children's food properly. I've already mentioned that. They don't know the kind of food to give to a child. One of the time I was, I think I went to the hospital. On my way back, I saw a, a, a woman in one of the wards. She was feeding a baby. I asked, how old is this child? She said, she said the child is two months. Two months, she said yes. And when I checked the food she was giving to that child, man. Man. A baby of two months eating that kind of food. Can that baby stool? When I was saying it, somebody said, maybe she does not have. I said, no. It's not because she does not have. It's because she does not know how to make that thing that she is with in a way that will suit the baby. Because of the baby's age. Have you not seen babies that will be born that, that very, very first day, start giving them pap? Now, it's not even about giving the pap. How do you make that pap? A pap that you're giving to a, a two-month-old baby. You are making it look like a pap that an adult would, would take, you know? So, it, 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 it has a lot in it. The next one is lack of care. Some parents and guidance, after giving out their child for marriage, they don't check on them. This made, sometimes makes the child to be irresponsible. They don't check on them. She wanted to be married. She wanted to be pregnant. Now you have pushed the child out. And to parents, if you know that any of your child has gone astray, maybe is involved in an unplanned pregnancy, and because of that, you have pushed that child out, go and look for your child. You're not doing well. Yes. Some people will say, Patricia, what, what are, why are you encouraging that? It means you're, you're encouraging the girl. No. I'm telling you as a guidance counselor, go and look for your child. When you look for the child, give that child care. Give that child support. Bring the child back. When everything is calm, you keep that child down and talk to your child. Pushing the child away will make the effect very, very heavy. It will increase the pains because as she's going out, she's facing other bullies, other torture. There are so many things that she's going through that she will not tell you. If you have done that, look for your child. These children sometimes go in, get pregnant out of ignorance. They don't know. Did you teach them? Did you teach them? You don't teach them. You don't bring them close. You don't tell them things. At the age of 7, 8, you should start teaching your children S.E.X education. S.E.X education. Yes. If you join it, you understand what I mean. Give them the education on time. You have never kept your children, your boys or your girls to tell them, this is how it is, this is how it is. When you do this, when you do this, you go astray. You shift yourself very far. Some of you, you make your house terrific that your children cannot talk to you. So each time they want, they have an issue, they talk to their mates outside. They don't talk to you. And knowing fully well that as they are talking to people outside, don't know the people they are talking to outside, they will get wrong advice. They are like minds. Better feathers flock together. So they will be telling her, no, 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 do like this, do like this. Have you not seen children who go into, um, I don't know how to pronounce this one. A dot Boshan. Hmm? Do you understand? A dot Boshan. They go into it. If you join it, you get A dot Bosha. They go into it and they die in the process. You don't know why. 
before you realize a child that you have suffered and groomed is gone because of negligence and ignorance so that is that infection is the next one infection is the next one you know when the water breaks before labor it can cause infection Do you know why the water is, sometimes the water breaks like that? It's because the child, I don't know how to put it so that you understand. Maybe I'll have to invite a gynecologist to come here and explain some of these things so that I'll bridge. When a woman is pregnant and it gets to the point of delivery, so when the, the water breaks, you already know that it's time for labor and then childbirth and all that. Is one of the process. But when a child is pregnant, and pregnancy is like, let me say, six months or seven. Or let me say six months. Let me not say seven, because I've heard people put to bed seven months. Only God knows. Six. And then the water breaks. Without anything, else. no form of labor, no form of pain. If that child is not very careful, that child will have infection. That's that. And then complications like abnormal heart rate of the baby. You know that the baby is inside. And maybe the place that the baby is, is not, the baby is not comfortable. That baby is struggling inside, is going through a lot. Do you know why the child is going through a lot? It's because the person that is carrying the child is not fully matured matured so many things it's not mature so many things in the child's body is still also going through development and growth so you see both of them struggling the uterus is trying to align is trying to accommodate the baby and then in the process the pelvic is trying to you know in a way i may not really go into explaining how this thing works but that is just the general thing so the baby inside is under duress because where the baby is, the baby is not comfortable. It's not comfortable. So you see those kind of issues, you know. You have issues like complications like excessive bleeding. Start bleeding excessively. Because of tears. How do we call it? Perennial tears. The baby, the baby that is carrying the baby. That is, a baby is carrying another baby. So, the baby that is carrying the baby cannot push the baby out. Because the V is small. The, you know, is small. I don't want to mention it. We should not make me mention things that are violent rules. It's small. So, there is a tear. Because as an adult, everything in that side the way God created it has its, its, its own, um, every part has its, its own um, um, duties to perform. The one that is supposed to enlarge will be enlarged. The one that is supposed to expand will expand. The one that is supposed to drag will drag. And all this process will help the baby to be free. But when these things were not, you know, you didn't give it time for you to, these are the things you see. And you see the, the child will start bleeding. So one of the major causes or one of the major challenges you will see from a child giving birth to a child is bleeding the baby will tear to come out and then this other one will be bleeding so you have this be struggling to make sure they put it now solutions to child marriage i say solution but we can say preventive measures how do we even prevent them how do we do it this thing that is happening and is becoming you know a big problem how do we do it number one do not encourage child marriage do not encourage child marriage i have one um, friend that the grandmother every time will be saying i want you to get married early i want you to get even as you are if you see a man bring i'm not asking you i'm telling you, i say brought there i had that one so each time i'll ask that my friend will like why, why is grandma always telling you anytime you see a man bring has she forgotten how old you are? That you're still a child. She will be saying, if you see a man bring, we will support you, you will marry. 
supporting once you start giving children this kind of mentality that you know child marriage is encouraged once they see the person they will bring they will bring the next one is parents should give birth to the number of children they can cater for give birth to the number of children you can take care of why are you having children everywhere then you can't take care of one you're having ten why get bed, bed control uh, um, um, counseling or let me put it that way get bed. if you know you cannot there are some people that even if they there's some people that are rich that even if they have 10 children they can comfortably train their 10 children even 15 they are there the money is there they will train the children send them out and do a lot of things for them but you ordinary food you don't have you can you can barely feed you have 10 children for what what are you doing with them I'm not saying you should not have kids. In my in my dialect, you hear somebody saying, "Have I seen or them fat? Are you number?" That the same way God gave you a, a, a how do I say boils or how do I say He will give you nails to scratch it? No. Meaning that the same way you have been having children, in a way you will be able to take care of them. When we say take care of children, the K. The care is of they are of classes. First class care is there, second class is there, third class is there, four, feet, six, seven, ten. You see the ten degree care that you're giving to your children. You're giving your child ten degree care and you expect that child to do better than a child that is given first degree care. When I mean first degree care, you take care of that child health wise, physical looks. The kind of things you give to the child to the feeding because you know that feeding affects children in a way they, it has a way so what you give your child will be what the child will look like whether you like it or not in the morning you feed your child with carbohydrate in the night carbohydrate in the afternoon carbo. you can take carbohydrate from july to december everything is carbo 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 you don't make mistake to even add any other class of food now tell me how would that child look like Cognitively, will that child be very okay? Every time you're loading the child brains with a, this thing, and not one, not two. That's even for the people who have it. Some people don't even have to even give. So the children go hungry, and you see them begging. And you notice that they go around causing problems in the society, stealing. When they are hungry, they don't have. Daddy don't have money, mommy don't have money, they steal. When others are in class, learning, they are looking for a way to go and steal. You see them parading streets. What do you want me to say now? That is it. Parents should give birth to the number of children they can cater for. If you know you have, you can take care of three, do three. You know your capability. Do that. There's no need having children everywhere, and you can't take care of them. They will be carrying on planned pregnancy everywhere. Children everywhere. No care. No proper health care. You know, the next one is parents and guidance should work hard and not use their children as a means to get riches. Yes. Don't use your child as a way of making money. Some, some mothers whom children are very, very beautiful and very good looking and all that tend to be using the child to be doing other things. My daughter is there. My daughter is inside. Let me call my daughter. Have you seen my daughter? Let me bring my daughter out. You keep pushing the child, pushing the child because you have ulterior motive. When you start doing that, you will have problem. The next one is, um, if your child is pregnant, don't force her into marriage, child marriage. Meet with a professional counselor for advice. Your child is pregnant. You don't need to. Because she's pregnant, you have to force her into getting married. No. Let it be that she wants it. She's willing. She's ready. You know. And even as a child, you should advise her. Wait. Hold on. Be sure you're ready. People make mistakes. People make mistakes. That child could just be the first time she, she just said, let me just try it. <laughs> Not the first time. So many of them. So many of them even enjoy it. They know they even enjoy her. 
As they just go, you don't hang. You don't come back and ask. Some don't even know how. You notice that some children don't even know who is responsible. Because maybe they have one or two or three people. So, you know, parents have a lot of work to do. And then the next one is educate your child about S.E.X education. I've already mentioned that tell your children this thing. This is how it is. Teach them about menstrual circle. Teach them about opposite um, gender. Mm -hmm. Teach them about things. Let them know on time. So that by the time that thing is coming, they already know. I got mine very early. Ah, I learned very early. A lot of things. Now, the next one is, um, as a child, you have nothing to do with S.E.X. That's why I say, if you have children, let them watch me. As a child, you don't have anything to do with S.E.X. What are you doing with it? Are you a married person? Are you, are you a, a married woman or a married man? A child should not have anything to do with S.E.X. How can you be a child and you be desiring things? That is meant for adults. It means you don't even want to get to the adulthood or enjoy it. Because if you want to enjoy what adults are enjoying in childhood, when you get to adulthood, what will you enjoy? Answer me. What will you do? The next point is that children should be in school and not in marriage. As a child, you don't have anything to do with marriage. That's what you should know. You do not have anything to do with marriage. What are you doing with what, what what are you going inside marriage? What are you going there to do? The only business you have is to study. Go to school and become a meaningful person to your family and to the society. And then you can talk about marriage. With time, you go use your hand, they select. It is you that will be looking for no this one, no, this one. You use your hand to choose because you've already set a standard for yourself. So when they start coming, you will choose. You have choice. What are you saying? Why are you rushing? So at this point in time, I want to say that S education should be taught and made compulsory in schools. You know, that time when I was growing up, my cousins, or when each time they want to talk about anything that is related to S education, when I, I, I walk close to them, they'll keep quiet. Do not talk. They don't want me to hear what they are discussing, you know. But let me tell you, when you start telling them all these things on time, when they see that thing, they will understand better. So, teachers, mentors, counselors, pastors, preach it. If you want to stay in your chancel and preach about S education, preach it, maybe they will hear. Sunday school, Sunday school teacher, most especially. I don't know why, I don't know how to even say it. Sunday school is not just to teach only the things you see in the Bible. There are so many things. Sometimes you divide the class into two. The ones that are that are up to the stage of, you know, that are up to the teen age. Say, take them, tell them things. Let the boys here, let the girls. There's no need to say, we want only the girls to learn. What are you saying? You want only the girls to learn. How about the boys? So when pregnancy comes, does it not take two to tangle? It takes two. So if the girl doesn't know, the boy should know. This thing we are doing, no. This time. No, 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 we can't do anything this time. My son, the school teacher taught me about menstrual circle. He's a boy that is talking to a girl. That's to say that they have taught him, he knows, he learns. He knows. So he's not telling you that he knows. You won't take him on away. Teach them. A son, they teach them. Teach them about puberty. Teach them about menstruation. Teach them about stigmatization. Teach them about self-esteem. Not only the things in the Bible. That time, you see, it's, it's, it's a complete package. So the job is not just for the parents alone. It's not just for the teachers. Even in, inside the church, you teach these things to help. Now, the, oh, Timmy Richie. Timmy Richie, thank you for coming. I really appreciate you. Thank you for being part of my class. Thank you. Welcome. So, that's for that. And then, second to the last point. Yes. As a child, your duty, you know, is to, what I 
what did I say, burn? And become a star in your field and study. Your duty is to become a star in your field of study. You don't have any other business. I want to become an engineer. That is your picture. As you wake up, you're going to school. That's your picture. You don't have anything to start looking for. If you're a girl, you don't have anything to start looking for a boy for. Fix your life first. When you fix your life, you'll be the one to choose the kind of person you want. Same thing with boys. And once you start focusing, just be going. Now, the last point is, more programs should be put in place to accommodate the girl child. Not only the girl child, the girl and the boy child. You have seen several programs, the girl child, girl child this, girl child that, girl child up. Girl. So how about the boy? I know that um, women have a lot of things to do and it has to do with marriage and family and all that. But then, the boy also should learn. You know. The reason why you see some, bo some, some men, they don't even know how to boil water to make curry. It's because the center of focus and concentration is on the girl child. So the boy feels he doesn't need it. At the end of the day, when they go to school, the money you send to them, they'll, they'll eat mama putty. The money will finish in under three days. Money that is supposed to take one month will finish under three days. He didn't teach them. So there should also be initiatives for boys. They should teach young boys. That's why I love uh, Boys Brigade Nigeria. They will teach you those things there too. That's one of the you know, group that I know that they will teach boys how to do this, how to do that, how to do that. When you start teaching a boy child not to be raising his hands on his younger ones, he will not beat his wife. He will not beat his wife. You see some men, you dare not even say a word. They even do it in their house and they take it outside. A little argument in public, they want to slap. A little argument, they want to beat a woman, which is not right. But I still give kudos to those parents who take time to train their children. It's not easy. And I clap for you. For all the parents who take good time to take care of their kids and teach them what this life really wants, I clap for you. So at this point in time, I have come to the end of my today's class on child marriage. If you have questions, you can ask me. Drop at the comment section. Drop it there. I will come to it. I will definitely come to it and I'll attend to you. If you want, if you have any issue you feel we should discuss, you can inbox me. Type into my inbox and I'll type you back. That's why Trisha's voice is here. So for all the people following me, in just a month, I have about 100 followers. So I am so happy and I tell you, thank you. Thank you for doing this with me together. Now, what I want to say is, if we have people, there's a time we'll come here to teach people on little, little things, cake making, you know, how to make bleach, you know, how to do soap and lots of things with time. But let's face the major issues first. We'll come to that with time. So if you want to advertise your any of your products here, you want me to talk about it, you let me know and we talk about it and now in a way I'll find a way to assist you also. So that is it. That is it. That is it. That is it. Thank you very much for being a part of my program. If you want to sponsor my program, you are very, very free. I need sponsorship, I have to tell you and be open. Because with time, we need to do billboards, we need to do posters, we need to go to schools and talk to young people. Trisha's voice will actually move to schools, yes, we'll go to school to talk about things, go to places, do community town hall, enlightenment on certain things, you know. So those things will require funds and all that. So if you really love what I'm doing and you want to sponsor me, you are highly welcome. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's still your favorite teacher, Ambassador Patricia Godwin. For now, it's a bye.